John Ashbrook is here with me right now. He's part of the Ruthless Podcast. If you haven't listened, you need to. It is fun. It'll make you laugh, and we need to do that right now. John, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, Martha. Thanks for having me. It's great to be on with you. It's just such a, what a time to be watching politics. I'm telling you what. I mean, look, I... I do get the point, and I'm I'm a Nikki Haley supporter. You know, I'm over here on an island by myself, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I understand exactly what is going on here, and, uh, and I do get the argument she's making, that roughly 40% of Republican primary voters are voting for someone other than Donald Trump, and uh, she feels like she is, uh, kind of like Ari Fleischer said the other day, she's on the runway of a new movement. This is what she thinks. Mm-hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, she's working towards that. Now, do I think it's ultimately going to end any other way than Donald Trump being the nominee? I don't. But I understand why she's staying in. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I do, too. I mean, she's perfectly within her right. Uh, She's got about 20 delegates, which, you know, isn't isn't enough uh, right now. Um, But you've got Super Tuesday coming up. You got a handful of states before then where more delegates are going to be awarded. And if she's someone who wants to be in a bargaining position at the convention, um, she'll have, she'll be able to take some delegates. No other candidate will be able to say that um, we'll be able to have the same, the same leverage. And, you know, you also look at her outcome in South Carolina, of course she lost by um, a wide margin, but she she gathered more votes in that primary than she's ever received in a primary in South Carolina before. She got more votes than Trump got in the 2016 South Carolina primary. She raised a million dollars after her speech, apparently, according to her campaign. So it really doesn't seem like they're slowing down. I mean, she didn't, I don't know if you, you've talked about this yet, Martha, but she didn't commit to continuing her campaign past Super Tuesday. But as you know, um, a candidate needs uh, a little more than 1,200 delegates in order to be the official nominee of the party. And so you could see her sticking around until Trump gets that number. Yeah, and and I think that that's probably makes it it possible um, to at least have some impact. I mean, I don't think she's going to win the nomination, but... I think it keeps the media talking about us instead of, you know, Joe Biden. And because Mm -hmm. they love talking about the problems in our party, right? They don't ever talk about the problems in their party. So Michigan's tomorrow. Um, They've got this weird system where they've got a primary, but they actually allocate the caucus, the uh, delegates through a caucus, which is kind of favoring Trump. And that's okay. I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm fully prepared for that. The interesting thing about Michigan is what's going to happen on the Democrat side. Because you've got Rashida Tlaib out there saying, you know, people should vote, I think it's called uncommitted or undecided or something like that, uh, which could mean that, you know, Biden could get beaten by a none of the above. Which would be wild. Which would be crazy. I mean, it, would be, it would be wild. And, you know, one of the one of the highlights over the weekend, I'm sure you saw, was Trump at the, I mean, he is so funny. The guy could have been a stand-up comedian. And I just, I really can't wait to see what, what he could do with material of Joe Biden losing to none of the above. I mean, I, I know, <laughs> you know he's going to be funny. You know he's going to be funny. Well, he was good. I thought he was very good when he came out and did that speech. Um, you know, as a, and I get that I got a little bit of a bias here, and I'll accept that. But I do think, you know, announcing at 701 that he won the primary, they could have stretched it out just a little bit. Okay. But I think He's Fox, a showman. I know. I think Fox News is so concerned about, you know, they got painted as being anti Trump right after the 2020 election. I think they're working really hard to get back into where mm-hmm. they're going. Um, so he gives this speech really early, and it was a real positive speech speech. He didn't name call. He didn't, you know, he went after Biden and not other Republicans. I mean, I think it was a good speech. Yeah, I think so, too. And I think it also indicates where his head's at, which is consolidation mode. And if you're a Republican, that should be music to your ears, because, you know, after watching the outcome of that South Carolina debate, regardless of how big Trump's margin over Nikki Haley was, Nikki Haley still had almost 300,000 votes in a red, red Southern state. And 
um, that it shows you that our party is split and that he's got work to do to get everybody back under the tent before November. I think he can do it. I actually think, and I know you, you would agree with me on this. I actually think picking Nikki as the number two would be a good move for him. I mean, Trump is not somebody who's going to be taking orders from anybody. So the idea that you may not like Nikki's politics, you may not love everything about her. Tr- Trump, it's not like he's going to say, oh, hey, Nikki, you tell me what to do. And that's it, not how Trump operates. Right. But what making her his VP might do is show both ends of the party that we're coming together to beat Joe Biden and to and to bring uh, some sort of reasonable leadership back into the White House. Because as she said in her comments, 40 percent is not a small number. OK, and. If we're going to win in November, those 40 percent, and I think most of them will come back. The numbers in South Carolina Mm -hmm. said 24 percent of the people um, who voted for her wouldn't vote for Trump. And um, 5 percent were crossovers from Democrats. You know, there's always this talk about crossover, right? It never actually happens the way people say it's going to happen, right? Um, and the right, and the states right. that have allowed open voting have been doing it for generations, like ours in South Carolina, Alabama, other states like that. So if only 5% of that 24% are Democrats, say, there's still about 20% of Republicans they got to win back over that aren't going to easily come back. And that's where I think, and you and I have talked about this before, and tell me if I'm crazy, is that, you know, he's got to understand that he has his base. They're going to stay with him no matter what. Who he's got to focus Mm -hmm. on is how does he bring back in the rest of the Republicans? No, that's exactly right. You know, he was stymied by the Atlanta collar counties, the Philadelphia collar counties. Every suburban area in this country went a little bit more for Joe Biden in 2020 than they did for Trump in 2016. And that's why he came up short. All he needs to do is get back into these traditional Republican suburban areas and he can he can win with margin in November. He can't do it unless he demonstrates to those voters that he he wants to be the same guy he was in 16. If he does that, I think he can get them back. I this is just my own opinion. I think he can get them back and I think that choosing somebody like Nikki Haley um might uh, might get him started in that direction. No, I agree with you. I think, you know, there have been plenty of cases where people that didn't like each other very much ended up running together, right? I mean, people that took it all the way to the convention. I mean, George Herbert Walker Bush got to be Ronald Reagan's vice president, but he took it all the way to the convention. And so right. um, it was, I know that was before you were born, but not before I was born, but that's okay. <laughs> But, you know, it is it has happened before. People act like this is some weird thing. It happens all the time Mm -hmm. that people who run against each other end up being, you know, being vice president. I just hope he doesn't pick somebody really fringy, you know, like a Carrie Lake or a Marjorie Taylor Greene or somebody like that, because I know that he loves those kind of people because they they are totally loyal and 100 percent supportive. (laughs) But they won't help in bringing that 20 or 30% back. Well, when she worked for him in uh, the first term, uh, Nikki was a a loyal, you know, I I don't know, loyal soldier for Trump. She was doing what she was supposed to do so much so that they thought that she should, a lot of people, I don't know if you remember this, uh, Martha, but there was a movement inside the White House to replace Mike Pence on the 2020 ticket with Nikki Haley. Yep. I remember so that. So it's she's not without she's not without her fans uh, in the Trump inner circle. And again, I just think the guy's strength of personality overwhelms anybody who would be the number two. And I'm I wouldn't if you're if you're a big Trump fan and you're worried that that might um, that might <clears throat> pull him down in some way, I wouldn't because there's there's no you don't you don't go in and tell Trump what to do. It just it doesn't happen. No, it you know does what I mean? Not. The unique it figure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he because he, he fires goes, you. you know. If you go in and try to tell him what to do, he'll fire you. And that's, he doesn't mind right. doing that. Uh, so right. I want to get to, before, final question, I want to talk a little bit about what y'all talk a lot about on the Ruthless Podcast, which is just the management of this Trump campaign compared to 2020. Because I really think that's the difference between what happened in 2020 and what 
what happened in 2016, but also what's likely to happen in 2024 is the fact he has so much better of a team that he's put around him that he had than he had before. Yeah, that's that's exactly right, Martha. You know, he has two people at the top of his organization, Susie Wiles and Chris Lasavita, both of whom have about 40 years of experience, uh, or each of whom have about 40 years of experience in politics. They're not trying to impress anybody. They have just, they have been around, they know what to do, and they know what they can control. More importantly, they, they know that if, if Trump is going to say something, he's going to say something. He's in charge. He does, he does what he wants to do. What they, they understand is that their responsibility is to do what it is that they can control. And they know that they can hire very smart people. They can, they can hold all of those smart people accountable. Make sure that, pe- that, that if you're knocking doors, you're turning in your sheet, proving that you knock doors. If you're making, if you're talking to press, you are telling them, you know, you're, you're telling them factual things about why your candidate is better and why the other guy is disqualified because he's an invalid in the White House. And you're not, you're not leaking on each other. I don't know if you've noticed this, Martha, but the Trump campaign is not. You don't, you don't see the the sniping in the in the in the press like you did in 2020. Maybe that comes back if he wins. But uh, right now, it's very, very well managed, and it's it's a very conventional, it's a very conventional approach to winning a campaign, and that's exactly what he needs. That is exactly what he needs, just at the right time, and I think that's why he can win. Yeah, I think that it's going to be, a, it can be a good year for Republicans. We thought twenty two was going to be a good year for Republicans. Um, it can be a good year, and I think that if he keeps on with the tone that he's had um, in Iowa and then again after South Carolina, he was a little off the rails in New Hampshire, but that's, you know, he's Trump. He's going to have days where he's going to be off the rails. That's just the way he is. Um, it'll be interesting. And then, of course, you know, I was listening to something uh, recently right after the death of the Russian dissident, and it was a clip of Biden speaking three years ago about this issue, and he was pretty good, actually. 59 seconds, he sounded lucid, He and you compare it to the way he's speaking right now, there's no doubt. It's like, I think you guys use this analogy on the Ruthless Podcast, it's like Grandpa had a wreck and he's denied it, and now we got to take the keys away. That's where we are yeah. with Joe Biden. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly where we are. And it's it's actually why I'm, you know, a lot of people have different views on this. I really don't think he's going to be their candidate, um, their uh, their candidate in November. They have a convention that meets in August, one month after the Republican convention. And he has an opportunity to basically say, I'm not going to run again. And um, then they could decide at the convention who would replace him on the ticket. I can't imagine him in a debate. Can you imagine him in a no. debate against Trump? It would be <clears throat> Trump would honestly he'd have to pull punches so he doesn't look like a you know and it it, it is it would be a it would be it would it would it would be devastating for our country because it confirms to everybody boy what we saw two Thursdays ago um which was the guy's incapable of doing the job that he's supposed to be doing and it's really you know, you, 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 uh, did you see the, the Chinese balloon that was flying over the country uh, this weekend? I... Every little thing, every little thing that happens, most people are like, wait a minute, you know, we don't have, we don't have our best, our, our best hand on the wheel here. H- how do we get a new president? And that's really bad for Democrats. Absolutely. John Ashbrook, it is the Ruthless Podcast. You can listen everywhere you listen to podcasts. You can also go to ruthlesspodcast.com. They got some great merchandise uh, there. And, um, you know, you got to listen to them twice a week. It'll be a lot of fun. John, thank you for being with me today. Well-